The white-robed gentleman with the funny hat is the main attraction. This fellow is a typical example of the native Korean. He bows to the dominion of Japan, but he firmly declines to admit the superiority of Japan's intellectual and moral culture over his own. Japanese Empire. Here in the new palace, amid the regal splendor of a departed era, the former king of Korea lives on the bounty of his Japanese masters. The streets of Seoul illustrates how thoroughly the Japanese are assimilating Korea. Somehow the women of Seoul seem to be the dominating sex, and we wonder if this dates back to a certain custom that was once rigidly enforced. Every evening at exactly nine o'clock, a curfew bell was rung as a warning for all men to hurry home and remain indoors so that the women could enjoy the freedom of the streets. This law, however, has been abandoned, perhaps at the request of the ladies themselves. The children of Korea are particularly interesting. Almost from the time they are able to walk, they are obliged to care for their little brothers and sisters. The first thing inculcated in a Korean child's mind is respect for his father. In fact, the four dreadful things which a boy fears most are earthquake, wind, fire, and father. Playing dinner and imitating the ponderous etiquette of their elders is a favorite amusement. This little tot was most reluctant about permitting us to photograph the baby on her back. In an oriental garden, we were afforded the special privilege of seeing a native dance, very much like those given by the geisha girls of Japan. This is called the drum dance. Whatever else we may have seen in Korea, we will never forget the gentlemen with the white robes and the horsehair hats, for they are Korea personified. And it is here that old Korea bows to us in gracious farewell.